What's up guys, General Incompetence here and welcome to episode 1 of this Kingdom of Gondor Let's Play on Divide and Conquer version 5 which all of us have been eagerly awaiting for for quite some time. Um, I'll be completely honest with you, I have never really played Gondor before so I've had to do a little bit of background reading on this but I'm still going into it relatively blind but I have some ideas of what we're going to do but your comments and suggestions have never been more important than for this campaign. So before we get going please remember if you enjoy these videos remember to give them a like. If you have any comments or suggestions when it comes to the mechanics of the Kingdom of Gondor, uh, when it comes to general tactics or anything that you want to, to tell me, um, then please leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if nothing else, comment on the video as a sacrifice to the algorithm of YouTube. And remember, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you're a Divide and Conquer fan, because I plan on not only doing this campaign, but I really want to work more King, um, Divide and Conquer campaigns into my, uh, into my channel. So without any other further ado, let's jump into it so all of you can uh, i'm going to slowly scroll through this so if you want to pause the video and read it you can but effectively with gondor as you can see we are very infantry focused and we do not have much cavalry so it's going to be really imp really important to use what cavalry we have because we are going to be outnumbered by Mordor quite significantly and if we can get ourselves some good cavalry and use them well they should be able to rout quite a lot of the Mordor forces so that should be fun. We also have some pretty damn good archers in the Athelian ranges as well and I think there's Black Veil archers somewhere that are meant to be pretty damn good um, and we've look we've got the heavies we've got Fountain Guard and Wardens of the White Tower and from my understanding the barracks event has been removed from version 5 of Divide and Conquer which means we can get the good shit from day one if we have the right buildings so let's get started and I must say I've always in what I have played of Divine and Conquer, I love the artwork, and I've no idea. I'd love to be able to give credit to who does this artwork because I, whilst I've not really tried, I've never seen it anywhere on the anywhere else on the internet. Like if you Google Lord of the Rings artwork, I'm sure this doesn't come up. But I'd love to know who the artist is. Like, is this artwork made bespoke for the Divine and Conquer campaigns, or? Have they just taken it with permission from elsewhere? I don't know. But if anyone can let me know who does this artwork, I'd really like to follow them. Um, and also, I wouldn't mind having some of their artwork perhaps framed and put up in my gaming room. Um, I just think it's really, really cool. And at the moment, I'll be honest, my gaming room is kind of dominated by um, by Star Wars, with the exception of one map of um, uh, Essos and Westeros and one map of uh, Middle-earth. But anyway, I will also slowly scroll through all of this for those of you that want to read it. So there you go. And I will also slowly scroll through this for anyone else that wants to read that. Now, um, at, the, at the time of recording this, and it's uh, Wednesday the 4th of January 2023, um, this is still in public beta, so there are still some crashes, and hopefully, I believe, any hotfixes that are released are save game compatible. If they are not, then I'm not going to be able to get the hotfixes, and we're just going to have to plow on ahead as is, but hopefully we won't encounter any crashes and bugs and what have you and we will be absolutely fine um also this is not currently available on mod db so i would highly recommend that you all if you want to play version 5 get yourself onto the divide and conquer discord click on the dac install option and 
all of the options will be there. Now, as you can also hear, I have not gone down the music route of getting the YouTube slash streamer music because I'll be honest, I bloody love the original score uh, from the movies that they put in this. Um, it, it really kind of adds to the playing experience and hopefully will add to your viewing experience. And let's also be real, I've not got enough of you to make money from this shit anyway. So um, I hope you enjoy the original music as part of it. Now, let's get down to business, shall we? Um, a lot of people when playing Divide and Conquer campaigns immediately just build Mason's Halls everywhere or the faction's equivalent of this. However, in my not so infinite wisdom, I have decided that would be a mistake in this campaign. We've only got 12,000. We're just about breaking even. Um, we are going to need troops and we are going to need money to support the expansions of our army and the collation of our army because as you all know uh, free upkeep is a real important function in divide and conquer so what i'm going to do first is every single town that i can i'm whacking up the tax and i don't care if my population declines in the early game because that is fine until i sort out the economy and then we can look at growth but until then, we're too far away from our settlements expanding anyway. I need money more than I need population growth. Again, if I'm committing some sort of DAC suicide by doing this, then let me know. But this is a great method one, in my mind, of getting some more cash. I won't be able to put that any higher. There we go. So we are now making just under 1,500 a turn. So that is a good start. What's this? Uh, we're at war with the uh, uh, Ardenheim. That makes sense. But let's just check diplomacy. Our allies are the Principality of Dol Amroth and the Kingdom of Rohan. As you would expect, that's great. We're at war with the Ard9, the Haradrim tribes, the very acts of Khand, and Mordor. So we're pretty much surrounded by enemies, with the exceptions of Dol Amroth. And right over here, we have some rebel settlements. Now the um, Enidwaith are, the clans of Enidwaith are here. And I believe they immediately take a settlement around here from one of the faction overviews of version 4 that I watched of Adekir Galadirathon who is unfortunately now left YouTube which I believe is a great shame but I completely understand um, so what I think we will need to do we will definitely need a diplomat that goes without saying whether we get him straight away or not I don't know but we're going to put in that diplomat I think we are going to need to make friends with the clans of Enidwaith to secure our borders here. But I would also like to at least take one of these two settlements. Now we've got a keep and we have a castle. So we're going to go for the castle. So that's something that we're going to need to factor in and sort out. I also think in terms of buildings, um, we should go after some low-hanging fruit in terms of what is going to actually get us more money early on in the game but also think about what buildings more expensive buildings make us the biggest amount of cash and that is where we should eventually look to build our mason's halls so i'll be honest i have gone through this early on and i've got like a little list of places that are, are actually going to make us some money so we're going to start by building a grain exchange in Minas Tirith, which adds on just over a hundred. I think it's like a hundred and ten or something like that overall. So we're going to add a grain exchange in Karazast. We are also going to add a grain exchange, as you can see there. Some nice little increases. I think that's about ninety that we get from that in Pelagir. We are also going to add a grain exchange. As you can see there, some nice increases. At Brethil, we are going to add ourselves a land clearance to increase the harvest. 
and an ethering, we are also going to add a grain exchange. Now, as you can see, corruption, the further we get from Minas Tirith, is a bigger and bigger problem. And the best way to counter corruption is by to increase law. So, we are going to head down here. And we are going to build, I believe, a meeting hall. Not only does that increase public order, but as you can see here, it actually helps us with a little bit of cash. And we're going to need some more public order because we're going to be moving troops around in a moment. And we are also, I believe there is one more meeting hall that we are going to build. And it is in drum roll i think it is actually in ethering so we're gonna have to build the meeting hall i don't know if we should build it first or if we should build it after the grain exchange also there is an argument that we should actually build a mason's hall here given that we've got two buildings early on so i'm actually going to change my plans i'm going to build a mason's hall here and then we're going to have our grain exchange and our meeting hall now in terms of the bigger boy buildings that are going to add a lot more money at Kalanhad, adding a mine is going to add on a total of 450, 460, oh wait, no, sorry, 466 we are going to get from building the mines. However, that is going to bankrupt us early on, so that is where we're going to look to build a mason's hall. Also, I've got written down and definitely why we want to build a mason's hall early on is that by getting a mine in Ethering, again, 466 again, something like that, 400 and something. Oh yeah, but then we've got corruption. So it is going to be 466 minus whatever we lose in corruption, but by then we will have tackled corruption by putting in a meeting hall. So you can see where I'm going with this. Also, Pelagia, we are going to want to put in a merchant's wharf at some point because we pop that in there that that's the real kicker there it's gonna add like over 300 i think no not 300 we'll see we'll put in the grain exchange first oh no sorry it's just under 200 like 170 something at breath hill also we can get mines so if I add in the mines, 160, 210, 217 we can get from that. But we'll add in, again, if there's two buildings we need to get there, maybe we should add in the mason saw first. No, we'll, keep, we'll stick with land clearance there because we do need to be actually making some additional income early on. And then finally, a, mer uh, a merchant's wharf at, at, wharf at Minas Tirith will also make us some cash. There we go. Right, next, troops. So, we need to, I want to split it in two. We need to unite Osgiliath. Now, I don't believe there's any way that we can pretty much do, do it, um, that Mordor won't get Eastern Osgiliath first. But we want to take it back. So I'm going to want to get troops as fast as I can over to my eastern borders near the Anduin. But I'm also going to want things over to my western border to take Thara Grondost, if that's how I say it. So, I think I am going to take this fella with his Black Root Veil archers. This is going to be a tad more expensive, so maybe I should... Let's have a look. Um, what do you have? Captain of Gondor. Oh dear, yep, we're going to need to sort that out. Okay, Captain's Bodyguard, yeah, we're going to need that. Um, Let's pop you into that fort. And lower the tax like that. Now there's a general around here somewhere, here he is, that has the best fucking cavalry the blood of ever 
my absolute favorite the royal swan guard 11 attack 16 charge and 33 defense there's only 13 of them which is annoying his secondary attack is also uh 10 which isn't isn't bad at all um we need to get him over to the front over here asa bloody p Marchmen. okay let us sit up camp here you, sir, with your curly hair. What are you saying? Yep, another captain's bodyguard. We need that. I'll have to lower the tax. Captain of Gondor. You're Lodge coming man. over to us, Gilead. Let us sit up camp. Here. All of you lot, you're coming over to us, Gilead. We'll yes. can't get you into we'll a fort. March to exhaustion, continuing. Fall the on Luminor. the fat. Uh, we'll put you in a fort just for the moment. And we're going to have to lower that tax. There we go. Okay. If I can do that... No, I cannot. That's annoying. Just trying to make best use of forts for some free upkeep. But not always possible. Right, over here. Captain of Gondor. Who have we got? Angbor the Fearless. Okay. Hmm. I will probably need you, actually. I will definitely need you too. So we'll need to lower tax rates a lot there. Mind you, it's such a small little town, it doesn't make any much of a difference, does it? The difference in very high tax and low tax is like 20 something. It's less than 80. Um, less than 30. So that's fine. But Pinneth Gelling Cavalry. That's the sort of shit we want. I'd love to get another unit of it, but the upkeep and upfront cost, just not worth it. So you are coming with me to help. Maintain order. What have you got? Anfalas Pikeman. No. You can stay put. You're not exactly elite. Onward. But I shall take this unit of Anfalas Pikeman all the same. Yes. Awaiting your command. Forward. So I'll join you two up. Maintain order. Let's lower your tax rate. Ready your weapons. Let us sit up camp. Let's Protect the blood of Numenor. Unite these two and start bringing them down. Ready your weapons. Let us sit up camp here. Now then, what is your upkeep? Because I'm assuming it's going to be Maintain order. reasonable. Watch for the enemy. 290. Again, it's Amphalas Pikeman, so I'm not really going to use you, but we actually make more money by putting Forward you in a fort and losing a little bit of income in Anulond. Okay. So that's our armies moved around. Actually, no. You need to move over here as well. And we shall action that. Or am I moving you over here? Not decided yet. But we also need to do some recruitment. So let's have a look at what we can get. Um, I think any cavalry is good to have. Um, I think I should probably prioritize the one turn stuff first. So let's just get some more infantry. I definitely want some more Athelian Rangers. So that spent a lot of cash. My lord, approaching. And then after that, I shall put in my Diplomat. So, Care Andros. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Now then, Faramir. My friend. My beloved friend with your Athelian Rangers. What to do with you? I think I would rather have you safe on the other side of the Anduin. 
at the moment and not get caught out. So I'm going to move you there. If that is a massive mistake, please let me know. But let me know why. Um, be kind. You know, I'm trying my best. Also, what have you got? You've got Captain's Guard as well. I want you in the mix. Um, what I don't have here, I'm probably going to need to need a meeting hall in Kerandros at some point because we need free upkeep. Now, can someone also explain to me how I upgrade barracks and get fiefdom barracks? Because I... Is it linked to the... Like, when I get... Okay, so when I go to the building browser, right? And... I look at fiefdom barracks. Okay, so they can only be in a castle. But if I go to a castle... Like... Okay, that's a citadel, right? There's no fiefdom barracks built... But I'm not seeing any options at all for Fiefdom Barracks. So, is it linked to me building blacksmiths? Because it doesn't say that it is. If I go to Castle and I go to... Okay, so look, Fiefdom Barracks isn't even in there now. Okay, so it's now saying it's in a city. How do I get a Fiefdom Barracks? Is, has this been something that's been changed? Because if I click on a castle it says it needs to be in a city if I click on a city the bloody thing says that it needs to be in a castle so have they just removed fiefdom barracks from version 5 I don't know someone let me know how I get that because I'd quite like to get that sorted and also it'd be good to know how important building um, blacksmiths and their upgrades are in this campaign because if it is really important then I will then prioritize that what I do know is that by building upgrades um, you, uh, like the models of your infantry changes, which is kind of cool. So that's also a thing. I am going to leave them. I think I've got more important things to be sorting. I'm going to put you in there for the moment. We will put the troops in care on Dross. For sure. But I don't think we're going to get attacked in turn one. Also, I have terrible luck with spies. So I'm unlikely to actually use that spy to do much spy, but just to, like, reveal territories. Okay, I think for turn one, that will... Ah, no, it will not do. The blood of it will not do at all. I'm wrong. Good. Another captain's bodyguard. Let's get you over. Have I overlooked anyone else? Maintain order. Uh... Lebanon Marines. Lebanon Marines are good. It's not like a cat. It's not like he's got a captain's bodyguard. There's a lot of him, for sure. But I think I will keep him Pelagia. Keep that all nice and hunky dory. I will move you next turn. I think everyone we want to move has now been moved. I'm sure some of you are slamming your heads against your keyboards because I'm doing this all wrong. But that's what the bloody comment section is for, isn't it? Ah, okay. Let's move you to Western Osgiliath to join our Lord and Saviour, General Boromir. We will start moving more troops over to Osgiliath as well um, when required. Right. Let's get to it. Let's get down. Let's get down to business. Okay. I do love the Principality of Dol Amroth. In fact, um, Lionheart's campaign of the Principality of Dol Amroth is one of my absolute favourites. Mainly just because I adore cavalry charges. I think they're so much fun. Right, here comes Mordor. Apparently that's also one of the script changes. If you play as Mordor, you don't get all the Nazgul at once. They take up to like 50 turns to all return. Um, all of the Nazgul are available from the outset to Mordor when you are playing as Gondor. You want us to take Ostithil. That is not going to happen right now because I don't have the wherewithal to do so. The Seal of the Steward. Give this to the main man you want... To the man that you want to be the next heir. Okay, cool. We're the largest faction. Great. 
Okay. Awaiting your command. Hey, you are expensive. My lord. Yes. Protect the blood of Numenor. And we'll put you in there for the moment because they've not even reached um, Eastern Osgiliath yet. And there we go. All of a sudden, we're slightly in the green. Okay, Koki, let's begin moving our shit on this side as well. Maintain order. Marchmen. Let us awaiting your command. In fact, let's just put you in the fort until we can unite everyone together. We might as well make advantage of free upkeep while we can. Protect the blood of Numenor. And yeah, in Pineth Gallen, at this fort, that's where we're going to bring everyone together. Why is that now losing me money? I've just put people in for free upkeep and I'm making less money than I was before. Ah, it's because I've taken you out. 265, are you... Is all of your upkeep quite cheap? No, it's not. I don't understand what I've just done. That should have saved me money, but whatever. Whatever. Okay, we've got a decent force now in Western Osgiliath. We will have a decent force in Ker Andros when we need it. In fact... Oh! So Sirith and Gol, which is there, is now a fort. It's not actually a city. Um, I don't know why exactly that's happened. My guess would be to have two cities so back-to-back -back like that. You know, that's really tough to take one, have another stack spawn, and to move into the next. Um... So I kind of get it. I kind of get it. Right. Diplomat is coming next. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spend any more money just because we don't really have any. Um, what we are going to be doing, and again, some of you might slam your heads against the keyboards at this. We will be selling our map information because we need to remain solvent, ultimately. And we do not have any um, diplomats right now. So I've got to wait to do that. Oh, I've got to preview. My bad. So yeah, I'll be working out a price point and trying to sell our map information for that. Oh, there's the mouth of Sauron, and here comes Mordor. I might even get myself two diplomats. Send one up towards the um, like the realm of Lothlorien at, and the Woodland Realm, etc. And one over towards the Dunedain, the Dunlending, Zenith Waif, etc, etc. Right. The seven Palantiri once resided within Middle-earth, smuggled away by the faithful from Numenor, and split between the kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor, as our Parazon led their fallen brothers to their deaths in a war against the Valar. The Palantir allowed the user to converse with the other holders of the stones, able to cast a watchful eye across their domain and speak with their allies. But with time, the great stones fell. From seven stones, only four remain within the lands of Middle-earth. The Anor stones reside within the great city of Minas Tirith, the, captain of Go the capital even of Gondor, and the bastion of the free people. The Great Stone was sealed away, never to be used, uh, following the fall of the sister city, Minas Ithil. The Ithil Stone was believed to now be under the control of the Dark Lord of Mordor, and the council has decided it to be too great a risk to use the Anor Stone, as their brothers had fallen under the sway of the Dark Lord, rendering them just as vulnerable. Okay, this is a lot to read. This is a lot to read. Basically, Denethor is now using a stone he shouldn't be, and it's going to send him mad. I think that's that's the crux of that. I was getting quite tired reading, reading all of that. Oh, now we're making some cash. Agent recruited, diplomat, good. Your orders. Oh, he's quite decent as well. Um, right. Let us start by going to Rords Rohan. I know they're Tomorrow's already our allies and we're already up. trading with them. But I'm going to sell them some map information because I can. 
Right, Kelland, we can't yet get the mines, I'm afraid. Is there anything to be gained by getting that? A little bit. There's some cultural unrest. And we would need a school to be able to deal with that, but it's not a big problem. Mm. Or is it best to just save our money? Let's just save our money, because we're going to have to spend it in Ethering, aren't we? So in Ethering... Oh, look. All of a sudden, we can now get roads. Oh, boy. Yep. Roads are going to be useful. So it looks like building certain buildings unlocks others. So we're going to need to work out, or ideally, you lot, you lot are going to tell me what buildings unlock what. Was it the grain exchange? Yes, it was. It's the grain exchange I'm getting first at Ethering. And we also have a meeting hall down here, which has helped to steady public order. And I've got written down somewhere what we were going to... Uh, what we were going to get from that city. Nope, I don't think there's anything. So that's fine. We're just going to... Uh, or shall I build something to... Increase public order. Can't afford anything. We'll leave it as it is for the moment. It'll be fine. Relax. Okay. Awaiting your command. Let us sit up, Captain of Gondor. Let's move Let ourselves up, over. We're still making a reasonable amount of cash, and we've got generals standing by, ready to move in, including our Athenian Rangers to care Andros, which I am debating moving now. We're about to get another unit of Athenian Rangers. I just don't want to be laid siege to before I can get our troops inside. I'm gonna stick you! 62%. I'm not gonna roll the dice. I need this spy too much. I am going to spend some cash, though, on a diplomat. Because I want to. Because I'm greedy. Approaching quietly. Unfortunately, I haven't thought to put a watchtower... What have you got? Captain's bodyguard, that's good news. Now, watchtower please, thank you very much. And get yourself back in. There you go, buddy. Um, we probably should also get just some more territorial guardsmen. Um, I know we're now losing money a little bit, but my lord. That's okay. I'm gonna stick you! Orc versus Orc violence. Love to see it. Right. Send the turn. Oh, there we go. That wasn't nearly as hard as I was hoping it would be for them. Ah, here we go. This is where potentially using the Athelian Rangers just to sally forth and take them out would be good. But again, I'm a little bit wary of them getting caught out by an army I cannot yet see or hasn't yet spawned. Moran and Guard. Yeah. I think that's coming towards Care Andros. Okay, we have another diplomat, so let's do something with that first. You're My good Lord. as well. I am going to send you up... Uh, duh, 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 which way? I could send you to Dogaldul first, because we're not at war with Dogaldul. And then we can tomorrow. cut across to see the elves, Kazadum, and then up towards the Valesmen, and Dale and Erebor. Right. Minas Tirith now has its grain exchange. Cool story. Brethel has its land clearance. Pelagia now has its grain exchange. And Karas now has its grain exchange. 
and that's why our finances are looking a little bit healthier than they were to start. Again, this is good news. However, we're about to decimate some of that by moving out all of these lovely generals to Western Osgiliath. The blood of Numenor, Captain of Gondor. Or are we going to do that? Effectively, we want them to make a mistake by removing troops from Eastern Osgiliath so we can quickly snipe it out. We should be able to get these troops into Western Osgiliath at short notice and be able to take it. And I also believe that if they were to attack us here, we should be okay. As you wish. Let's move you in here as well, because there's no difference in terms of upkeep. Fountain Guard, your upkeep is just so much. So much upkeep. I'd love to have you at the front lines, but you're never going to get free upkeep here. And... Hmm undecided but i think this how many archers have we got gondor archers which are good arch militia eh. arch militia and you are i believe the veterans of osgiliath which you now have yeah legio one osgiliath the osgiliath veterans they are reasonable archers as well so you've got high accuracy it might not be a high missile attack but accuracy is very high uh, you've got decent range, and you've got 30 missiles. So you you will be useful to have as an archer unit. You'll be able to pick a lot of them off at distance. I could probably do with some more heavies, though, to defend Western Osgiliath. But we then have those long bridges that cross over. So that will work to our advantage with the missile troops as well. I think we'll probably be okay if they do randomly decide to attack us. So I'm going to keep everything in that fort. However... Yeah, that is my concern. Captain of Gondor. That is my concern. I could sally I'm forth. Gonna stick you. Maintain order. Can I make it back in time? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. While well, I'm thinking about it, where's my other diplomat? Your orders. This Without way, please, question, sir. Thank you. Stopping here. Oh, I just want to get him in the fight, you know. Maintain order. Well, this evil. All right, let's just fucking do it. Moran and guard, orc archers, and another Moran and guard. Hopefully, they're not even going to be able to reach us for combat. Hopefully, we can further. shoot the shit out of them at range. Come on, Faramir. It is plain indeed that in spite of later estrangement, hobbits are relatives of ours, far nearer to us than elves or even the dwarves. Concerning hobbits. Sure, late evening is fine. Right, let's have a look. What up, Faramir, bro? How's it going, buddy? Obviously, the graphics are on as high as they can go on all settings. So there he is. There's our Faramir. And here are his Athenian rangers. Watchful. And here are the other Athenian rangers hiding. But we're just going to get them in one big line. One happy family. Let's group. Shift one. But I don't even need to group them because I've, I've not exactly got any other troops. It's just habit. Um, ideally, I'd like some form of high ground. In fact, hiding behind a rock like that will really, if they do get to us, impede some of their charge. So let's do that. And then we should be able to start shooting them relatively quickly. It just makes sure that they come to us. They'll soon be in range and we can start shooting the fuck out of them. So here are the orc archers. Graphics look awesome. And the rest of them are on guard. Oh, looks like they don't want to play. Oh, shoot them in the backs. Love that. Love your work. Already that's 2% killed. Okay. Looks like we are going to need to march forwards. 
I hope they're not bloody withdrawing from the battle. That would be really, really annoying. I think they are, you know. I think they're just withdrawing from the battlefield. Surely not. Come on, this is our first battle. Don't be pussies. Come play. I just want you to hold a couple of hours for me. In your faces. Oh no, they're now pitching themselves up there. That's fine. We just need to get close enough that we can stop peppering them at range. Is that close enough? Not yet. Okay. Let's move forward a wee bit. That should do it. Yep, yeah, here we go. Alright, guys. Let them have it. Glory! And they come. Ka-chow! That'll get them moving if nothing else does. They're not going to let themselves surely just stand there and get shot in the face. Oh, look at these captain. Look at that. That looks awesome. We'll get rid of their range. Here they come. I'm happy just peppering some of their archers to start with because they are the range threat. And then we can just shoot these at um, close range when they get closer. Yeah, 12% already done. Because if I just quickly pause, the accuracy, look, exceptional accuracy. If we think of the um, Osginiath veterans, they had high accuracy, 30 missiles and 190 meters. This is 36 missiles, uh, 220 meters and exceptional accuracy. So even though their missile attack is only six, that doesn't matter. With exceptional accuracy, we're pretty much hitting, we're never missing. So that's why they're all dying. All right, maybe one more volley on the archers, and then we'll start focusing on the Moran and Guard. Oh no, it looks like we're already focusing on the Moran and Guard. Oh my goodness. We are thinning them out, to say the least. Oh. This is almost as satisfying as a cavalry charge. Look at their numbers drop. We should also take the time to look and see what Faramir got. He's got lead ship, three uses. 60 second cooldown and 30 second duration. It's 150% to own army fatigue. Uh, does that mean that it reduces our fatigue? I'm not entirely sure. Um, and 50% to own combat effectiveness and locks our morale. Okay. Right. Let's actually thin out some more of these archers. Because they're starting to shoot me. Go on, let's... Give the archers a volley, shall we? No? Are you going to listen to me? There we go. Yeah, I don't want to lose these Athenian rangers. I know that we can retrain them, but still. I'd have thought my volleys would have killed more of them by now. Come on. Come on. Volley. Okay, so not all of the units are doing that. Still focusing on some of the Moran and Guard. Only half the enemy force remains. That's good. We've only lost 3%. But I want to kill more of these archers, please. They're just not listening to me. Maybe if I turned off fire at will. That Moran and Guard is pretty much toast. Right, let's turn off fire at will. And let's focus on these orc archers just for a couple of volleys. Just to really thin them down, then they can't really do me any damage. Still fucking not paying attention. Why is that? Am I doing something wrong here? I'm giving a bloody attack order for the orc archers, and they're not all listening to me. Alright, let's get them to below 20 if we can. Because we are going to need to focus on... Right, one more volley on them, and then we rip up this Moran and Guard. That'll do. Point blank range. Shoot the shit into them. Now, go. Fire. Fire. 
Oh. Oh my goodness. That stopped them in their tracks. Uh, more. Shit. Shit. Fire. Okay, we managed to shoot them just as they charged. Oh my goodness. The battle is very much in our favor. Victory will be ours. The lands of my people fall into enemy hands. Huzzah. Come on. Move. I mean, we're going to win, but still. This is point blank range arrow style murder. And I love it. I'm all about it. Oh, they're trying to reform into a Shieldrum. I think. If they can do that. I don't know what the hell that is. But we're going to shoot it. Flurry! Oh, yeah. Lost more than I wanted to. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to pretend otherwise. There we go. They won't hold for much longer. Faramir, come this way. You lot, move back. Disengage. If they're going to stand like that, in a shieldrum like formation, let's get out of hand to hand combat. And just shoot the fuck out of them from all angles. Be watchful. Well, this is fun, isn't it? I mean, that guy's going to get killed, but whatever. If oh, there he goes. Ithilian Rangers doing Ithilian Ranger shit. And they're routing. Let's just shoot them on the way out. Actually... You can shoot them, and then charge. charge. Be alert, Rangers. Charge. Let's finish off the Orc Archers, shall we? I just bloody hope I can get these back into care, Andros, quickly. The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run right. them down. Let's see how fast you are, Athenian Rangers. Come on. Keep running. Quickly as you like. Never again will the land of my people fall into enemy hands. Oh, I love that. It's such a shame they cut that from the original uh from the original film. Obviously, if you're any kind of civilized, you've got the extended versions on Blu-ray or 4K. Uh, but there you go. Alright, come on. Go, go, go. Good. You've caught most of them. Nom, 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 nom. The enemy are utterly vanquished. Excellent. This is a great victory worthy of we got only some the mightiest of generals. Yeah, we got some casualties healed, which is good. No one gained any experience, but that's fine. Heroic victory. Huzzah. Baramir in play. As he should be. Gotta love it. Got to love it. Now let's hopefully get him back into care Andros before anyone can attack him. Uh, execute. Enemy camp, enemy camp sacked, which means we get a bit of cash. Protect and yeah, plenty, plenty Onward. of movement points. That's excellent news. Uh, let's merge into one like that, and now we can't do it, but that's okay. We probably will be able to at some point. Excellent. Good. Good result all round. Now then. 
Are you going to come after me? Or are you going to go for Care Andros? What are you going to do? Mm. I'm just trying to think if... Because I have some spare cash. I think I want my Royal Swan Knights in Western Osgiliath and fall on the fat, maybe. 355. Mm. Yeah. Let's put you guys in there, because then at least I have some cavalry as well. So if they did decide to attack, I could try and get some charges in somehow. And it does give us some more infantry to defend ourselves. Now, if I moved out the fountain guard, that's a write-off. So I can't do that. I think that is... that's fine. Now, let's put everyone in here. And we'll leave you in there for one turn. Just until the end of this turn. Just for the slight cash increases, then we'll move you all out. Okay, have I moved my diplomats? Let's just check. I have... Yeah, right. We continue. Your move, Mordor. Your move. Oh, here they come. Shit. Shit. Okay, well. Care Andros and Western North Gilead. Western North Gilead are about to come under attack. That is much we know for sure. I wish I had the spare troops to fucking get rid of them. Right. You. I recognize that actor. He's from HBO's Rome. Uh, he was Mark Antony, and he was also in A Knight's Tale. He was uh, Prince Edward. Captain of Gondor. But you're now a man of Gondor. Okay. Faction announcements. Okay, cool. Right, boys. Protect the blood of Numenor. Yeah, protect the blood of Numenor, indeed. What I'm have you got? Stick you. Black Uruk halberds. Black Uruks. My lord. Can we see? Have a taste of my blade. I mean, I just want to charge him in the face with my raw swan guard. See, I see why he likes that. I'm gonna stick you. Moranin guard. Morgul Chosen. Oh, is there any other units of Morgul Chosen that we can see? Because I think they are better than the usual trash. Black Uruks are decent as well. And they've got good morale. Moran and Guard. More Black Uruks. Orc Host. That's when we get into trasher units. Um, and the Black... And the Orc Archers. Luckily, they don't have poison arrows or anything like that, but... Again, they're relatively trashy. And they got low accuracy, which is something. Approaching quietly. And that is Sirith and Gol. Approaching I'm gonna stick you. And hopefully we have enough troops in here to hold. We've got plenty of archers. Um In fact, that's all we can get. Uh what else could we need to defend Care Andros? I'm gonna stick you. I mean, plenty of Athelian Rangers and Gondor Archers. Captain's Guard, Captain's Guard. God, we've only got four units of like actual infantry. So let's give Care Andros a unit of Gondor militia. Uh, we can't actually recruit any more Gondor Militia. What about from Kalanhad? We can. But it won't be able to get there if they're going to besiege it. So there's no point wasting that money. Okay. 
Ready your weapons. Now we're already losing money this turn, so fuck it. Who cares? Onward. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, yeah, we're going to need to get into that for ASAP. Uh, that is expensive. That is very, very expensive. Okay. I think that is going to work where we're going to leave episode one. We're absolutely poised. So, we have... Well, up until the last moment, we had stabilized our economy somewhat. Um, we have gathered together our armies over here at, in the east at the Anduin, ready for the Mordor onslaught that's about to begin. And we are making plans to secure our borders over here at Tharagrondos. We're going to take that with this army. And we are sending our diplomats out into the world. Yes. In fact, oh, I've just missed a Ro Rohan town. Never mind. Without question. Ah. Always happy to deal with you, trusted friends. Thank you. Now shut up and pay me cash. Seven hundred and fifty. How about that? Boom. Done. This seems an honor and a pleasure. Farewell. See ya. Yes. Tomorrow's journey planned out. In fact, no. Let's go to the clans of Enidwaith. I shall continue tomorrow. And yes, my lord. Head towards Dol Guldur. Ah, the dead marshes. Yeah, that's annoying because I'd rather have like missions that are like go and speak to Dol Guldur, go and speak to the realms of Lothorin, etc., etc. We'll give you a military unit or I don't know, fucking money. But is what it is. Anyway, that is where we're going to leave it. So please. Like the video if you enjoyed this episode one. Please, please do leave a comment. Not only is it a great sacrifice to the algorithm of YouTube, but I could really do with some suggestions. You know, I, I really want to learn from you guys as I play Gondor because I'll be honest, the main faction that I've played in previous versions of this game uh, have either been the Realm of Lothlorien or Khazadum. Uh, I know how to play those factions. I've never really played with Gondor. Um, so any insight you can give me will be exceptionally well received and I do read all the comments and if you haven't already please remember to subscribe to the channel and until the next one for now